Hello and welcome to Nexus Extra. Today, we're looking at the circumstances surrounding Jeffrey Epstein's death. The wealthy, well-connected sex offender was found dead in a New York jail cell three months ago, where he was awaiting trial on fresh allegations. Now, the coroner ruled his death a suicide, but there were so many irregularities surrounding his death that conspiracy theories abound. And just recently, a well-known forensic pathologist hired by Epstein's brother said he thinks the evidence points to homicide rather than suicide. It's an intriguing story, so let's explore it further now with our special guest, Dr. Cyril Wecht, a forensic pathologist with many decades of experience. Dr. Wecht, thank you very much for appearing on Nexus Extra. Let me ask you your you. opinion of Jeffrey Epstein's death. Was it suicide or murder? I have reviewed the autopsy report that was sent to me by Mr. Epstein's brother. I had discussed this case extensively previously over the past weeks, beginning uh, following his death on August 10th. And I have uh, reviewed this on many programs here in the United States. And I have had discussions with my uh, longtime colleague, Dr. Michael Bodden. Uh, very briefly, I will start by saying I fully concur with Dr. Michael Bodden. I believe that this is most probably a ligature strangulation and not a suicide. That is based upon the anatomic findings as a forensic pathologist. What was revealed when they did the autopsy on Sunday, August 10th, correlated with all of the background information that is so ridiculous as uh, to make anybody um, with a modicum of objectivity find it truly incredulous. And now, Dr. Wecht, for the, for the layman, uh, when you look at the evidence that was presented to you, in fact, may maybe you could just describe what evidence was presented to you. What is it that makes you feel it was more likely to be a homicide? Three fractures were found on Mr. Epstein. A fracture of the hyoid bone. That is a very slender U-shaped bone high up in the neck beneath the mandible, the jaw bone, the base of which is pointed anteriorly. That was fractured, and then the thyroid cartilage, the Adam's apple directly beneath, had two fractures, one on the right side, one on the left side. In all my years of experience, and I've done many, many um, thousands of suicides, I have never seen a case in which there were three fractures from such a lean-in kind of a suicide. And Mr. Epstein was found in a quasi-kneeling position. He had not jumped from a height. There was no force involved. In other words, just leaning forward. This right. is somewhat similar to what Robin Williams did uh, some years ago, tying something to a doorknob and leaning forward. So, you know, the basic formula uh, from our physics days in uh, high school uh, tell us that energy force equals one half mass times velocity squared. The mass is the head and the velocity is a zero. In, less than one mile an hour as you lean forward. You do not get three fractures like that so, in that kind of a scenario. To be clear, the injuries that he sustained are not actually consistent with the way he was found to have apparently committed suicide. That is correct. I want to point out something else uh, seemingly of a minor nature possibly unrelated, but interesting to note, there was a bruise with a little hemorrhage in the left shoulder area, and there were some bruises and abrasions, uh, contusions, abrasions on the left forearm and the hand. You certainly don't get those in a kind of a uh, leaning into suicide. Or well, presumably... Uh, they, would be, they would be consistent with what we call defensive wounds, trying to ward off and assailant. I can't say that they are, right. but I just wanted to point it out that they uh, are present and they do not fit in with a suicide scenario. And when you look at the damage to his body, uh, if you were describing what you think was most likely uh, to have happened to him leading up to his death, what would you describe? What scenario? Well, the scenario I have in my mind, and as Dr. Barton has set forth, is that it's a ligature strangulation. I think it's highly relevant, if you would like me to point out 
the background information very quickly because people who are interested in this case should be aware of those circumstances. Uh, can I uh, list yes, those for do. you? Please do. All right. First of all, you know the crimes that he had already been convicted of some years before and the crimes with which he was charged at this time. You do not put uh, a prisoner like that into a cell with a cellmate. They put him into a cell with a guy well over 200 pounds, muscular, former cop, who was charged with four murders. That is a big no-no. Then, on July 23rd, there was an incident in which I understand from Dr. Barden, the cellmate uh, accosted uh, Epstein, and um, he was removed. And Epstein was placed in another cell with another cellmate and put on suicide watch. Fine. Then, inexplicably, the suicide watch was withdrawn a week later. Then um, we find that the uh, new cellmate is removed from Epstein's cell one day before Epstein is found dead. Then, on the day that Epstein's death occurred, guess what? The cameras in the cell and outside the cell were not working. And the two guards who were assigned yes. to watch and observe him were so, overtired, overworked, and they fell asleep. What would you like so to those see? Are the what would you like to see happen now, Doctor Wecht? Would you like to see another actual examination of the body? No, that's not necessary. An examination of the body is not necessary. I'm not criticizing or questioning the results of the autopsy. I would point out that that medical examiner who did the autopsy at the New York City Medical Examiner's Office on Sunday, August 10th, signed the manner of death out as pending. It was the next day that Dr. Barbara Sampson, who is the chief medical examiner, who had not seen the body, who had not attended the autopsy, evidently began to think differently. And three or four days later, she ruled this to be a suicide. She had not received any investigative reports from the U.S. Attorney General, from the FBI, from the Federal Prison Board, or from anybody else that would have provided a basis for her to make that quantum leap from pending to suicide. So what I would like to see done is a full investigation. I would like to see the reports from all of those governmental, federal, state, local agencies, and uh, a, an objective review of this case. That's what I would like to see done. And a final question for you, Dr. Wecht. Uh, some people will say, well, Dr. Barden, your good friend, who suggests that it is more likely to be a homicide, was employed by Jeffrey Epstein's brother, and that might affect his judgment. I'm sure you would uh, ardently defend him against such a charge. Yes, I've been hearing that for more than 50 years in my professional career. It's okay when you go in to testify for the prosecution and you're paid by the government. That's okay. The moment that you testify as a defendant, you become a medical whore, a prostitute. Mm. Then you're easily bought. Uh, well, you're not bought. Dr. Biden's been doing this for 50 years. I've been doing this for 55, 56 years. You are not bought because you testify for the defense. In a democracy like England and the United States of America, defendants have a right to have their own experts. That doesn't mean that the experts are bought for a few thousand dollars. Dr. Wecht, thank you so much for giving us the benefit of your many decades of experience. And thank you for watching Nexus Extra. Remember, you can see the entire show on the link down below.